Welcome back. You're watching Power Breakfast on CNBC TV 18. Let's get in some previews coming in. Nigel is here to tell what the market is expecting from JSW Steel. Nigel, second quarter for the company to be in the Nifty. What is the street working with? Well, uh, the street, uh, the numbers will look quite good actually on a year-in-year -year basis and the standalone business in particular will look good. Uh, but we'll be waiting by for the management commentary in terms of uh, you know how, how adventurous they want to be now, have they bought enough and also what's the outlook in terms of prices. That being said, consolidated numbers, let, let's hit it off with that. Top line growth of around 17% is what we're working with. Remember, in terms of the domestic business, we already have the production numbers. That's coming at around 4.2 million tons. The crucial number you're looking at is the sales volume number of around 4 million tons. And that's a, a measly growth of around a percent odd. But what really drives the top line is higher realizations. Both of the domestic markets, steel prices have gone through the roof. Even the export markets, prices moved higher. And in addition to that, the rupee has moved from around 65 to around 71 odd. So they'll gain on the back of that as well in terms of uh, the export realization. Exports account for roughly around 17% odd of their total sales volumes. Margins, well, it should be more or less steady at around the 21% odd. The domestic business margins will look good, actually. So the EBITDA per ton in the domestic business, which is the most crucial number we're looking at, should come at around 10,900 to around uh, 11,000 rupees odd. Now, that'll be a big jump. If you just take a look at the graph, on a year-in-year -year basis, that'll be much, much higher. Though on a sequential basis, it'll be a bit of a downtick. Why is it higher on a year-in-year -year basis? Because realizations moved higher, though input costs will take away some part of those gains. Year-on-year, -year, it'll look good. On a sequential basis, why it won't look that good? Because prices have corrected by more than 10% internationally. Domestic prices as well have uh, corrected a tad bit. And remember, there's been some talk that various Ferris players, they have been offering uh, discounts as well. So we'll keep an eye out. Even on the US business out there, normally they do around 3 to around $5 million approximately. Let's see what they come up with this time. But the street is saying that since they've seen such a big correction in terms of international prices, that business could struggle. And the coated steel business as well is a smaller part of their business. That accounts for only around 15% out of the revenues. That could see some pressure as well. Back to you. Okay, Nigel, thank you so much for that. So we will watch out for all those factors. But moving on from the telecom space, Vodafone Idea would be reporting its numbers today as well. And Rima is joining again with us to tell us the key expectations. Rima, over to you. Yes, thanks so much for that. Well, bear in mind that the numbers are not going to be comparable on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis because the Vodafone idea merger got consummated only on the 31st of August. So last quarter, you had three months of idea and one month of Vodafone, which is why the numbers are not going to be strictly comparable. But I'll run you through what the expectations are. So revenue will be seen around that 11,780 mark. Margins will come in at 8.4%, but there is going to be this big loss of 4,700 crore that the street is expecting. If I compare these expectations with a pro forma of, uh, you know, a pro forma analysis is basically assume that Vodafone Idea had got merged for the entire three months. So if I put in the three month performance of Vodafone, add that to Idea, then you're working with a revenue decline of about two and a half percent, but some margin expansion. The reason the revenues could decline on a sequential basis, if I compare it with the pro forma analysis, is because uh, the company has lost a few subscribers to income other players. There could be a margin expansion on account of the synergy benefits. There were lower number of towers, cost savings, uh, so that could aid some margin expansion. Also, the average revenue per user could improve on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, something that we saw in the case of Bharti Airtel as well. The big concern is going to be the debt. The debt, as of the last quarter, was at um, you know at, at 11.25 lakh crore. Um, so anything, the company has already announced fundraising to the tune of 25,000 crore rupees via rights. But what the debt figure is right now will be critical to track. Back to you. All right, Rima, thanks a lot for that. Uh, the debt level critical for Vodafone idea. With that, we slip into a short break, come back, and we get you a check on the queues to watch from the futures and option space. Welcome back. Well, the markets continue to remain range bound yesterday in trade, but SGX Nifty for starters is suggesting a start above the 11,000 mark. So, how does the picture look like from the derivative space? Manglam will tell us more. Manglam, over to you. Well, yesterday, you know, uh, Anisha, the Nifty was higher by just about 20, 22 odd points, recovered from the lows, but still fell from the highs. The Nifty bank was higher. The Nifty mid cap index was not doing too well. In fact, three, three and a half, four stocks in the red, four, one in the green. And that is where the weakness was. Even if you take a look at just the Nifty, 
Nifty. It was just a handful of stocks, be it HDFC, Indusind Bank, Titan and Axis Bank, supporting the cause of the Nifty. But despite that, we have some very positive cues coming in from the flows perspective. Both the domestic as well as the foreign institutional investors pumped in some money in the cash markets. And add to that, the FIS bought big in index futures as well, close to around 800 crore worth purchase in index futures, 175 crore worth purchase in index options. That too, the internals looked fairly positive because just if you take a look at the internals out there, FII has added 6,500 long calls and this compares with just about 150 long puts. So they're hoping for an upside out there. And even at the lower levels, they added 5,200 short puts. This compares with just about 1,100 short calls. So they believe there is support at the lower level too. So the put uh, writing took place at 10,900. That's telling you 10,800 could be a support. 11,300 call perhaps saw some bit of punt buying at 27, 28 odd rupees. For the Nifty Bank, keep an eye out on that. Tomorrow is the weekly options expiry. 27,500 call saw a fair amount of action. And Jet Airways and Reliance Capital, both of them enter the FNO ban. Okay, so optimism for derivative space. Let's see whether we are able to sustainably hit that 11,000 mark or not. But with that, we've completely run out of time on this edition of Power Breakfast. Stay tuned for Bazaar Morning Call.